last presentation in this block of presentations on invisible lexicography. Things are going to get spooky because Sasha and Robert are going to take us to the dark side of lexicography. Thank you. Um, now the slides are gone again. That's a really dark side. It shouldn't be so dark. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for attending our talk. And um, I'll just uh, get right started. I will start with presenting some background. And then Robert will show you the dark side. The entry is unseen. Um, as for the background, the context is the Victionary project in, financed by the NCN in Poland where our primary question is, what lexical features make it more or less likely for people to consult dictionary entries? We are basing our analyses on Wikimedia logs of user visits to the English dictionary over several years. And for now, we considered the following factors. Corpus frequency, these are already well-established effects, effects that had been shown before. Um, we added age of acquisition, when in life a word is typically acquired by the speakers of this community. Word prevalence, which means how many, the share of people in a population um, who know a word. And polysemy, we are doing this binary, is a word polysemous or not. Um, Let's have a peek at the, at the raw log view data. This is what it looks like if you access the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, they are calling them data dumps. Um, and on the left, you see each CZIPED file holds information for one hour of views. And the important thing is, you see that these GZIPED files are pretty large because all of Wikimedia's, um, of the projects from the Wikimedia Foundation, all the views are in there. So we have to extract the data for the English dictionary from these, so, and delete Wikipedia, Wikiquote, Wikidata, stuff like that, you know all the other projects maybe. And then we have to aggregate for days, months, years, or the whole period, because hourly data is really bulky, and for most analyses, we don't need data on an hour resolution, but of course, we don't throw it away, right? So from this, we compi compile a data set that looks like this, at least in the beginning. Um, one row per entry with the title, the page ID, the number of views, and also one column, which is called created at, and we extracted this using the Wikimedia API with uh, custom R scripts to extract the first revision of an entry. And the first re revision is simply a technical term, term for the creation of the article, right? Um, so this is the data set we are dealing with. And I will show you some um, results. We already published as a preprint, maybe you saw that. Frequency still has the, by far the strongest effect on predicted entry views, and the more frequent the word is, the more often it is looked up. This is in line with other recent findings. We did um, research with uh, Jill Maurice, for example, on an English Swahili dictionary. Um, German dictionaries, the German dictionary also shows this effect, so this is pretty well established. And in the end, you could say that it supports the reliance on corpus frequency in lexicography. For polysemy, words with more senses are looked up more often. We also showed this effect for the German dictionary, so this also seems to be pretty consistent. And we interpret this that it is a greater challenge when we encounter polysemous words because they are competing meaning candidates and it might be necessary to look up to look these up in a dictionary which meaning candidate you um, you are you just have encountered for example in the language age of acquisition words that are acquired later in life are more likely to be looked up we interpret this as um, as follows you first need a solid grasp of early words before the onset of literacy. And this is a condition for even using a dictionary. 
right? So if you get older, then you are looking up the, then sometimes you um, develop the ability to consult a dictionary, but then you don't look up words you already know. Um, so this is how we interpret this effect. And finally, the prevalence effect. Words that are known to more people are looked up less often, which makes sense, but you also have to uh, be careful because this is a quite small effect compared to the other predictors. If you have a look at the y-axis, this effect goes from like 9,000 views um, on average to 21,000 views. For example, for frequency, this was a really a much more wider range there. So this sums up our results so far. The hierarchy of predictors we had a look at up until now. Corpus frequency, by far the most important, and prevalence down the line. Um, with age of acquisition and polysemy between those. So it's not that dark yet, um, but uh, Robert will take over now, and maybe it's getting darker now. Thank you. So uh, the dark side. Um, the big question that inspired this part of the research is that we thought that maybe just maybe a lot of the work that uh, lexicographers are doing, be it professional or amateurs, as in the case of uh, the Wiktionary, is wasted in the sense that there are no people that actually look at these entries. So we wanted to see whether that's the case and to what extent that's the case. Um, so uh, for this part of the research, we used uh, three years of logs of uh, user visits to the English Wiktionary, uh, as shown in the first slide by Zasha. And then we crossed it because uh, of negative evidence. Obviously, we couldn't see in the logs what wasn't visited, so we needed uh, the complete set of what could be visited or could have been visited. Uh, then we um, obtained a complete list of entries which were tagged as uh, English lemmas in the Wiktionary. So um, having combined these two data sets, uh, uh, we got over 1 billion views in the logs, 1.1 billion views, uh, spread over half a million entries. So that's quite a large data set. And to get to the answer immediately of these over half a million uh, entries, only 101 entries have never been visited. So that's a very, very tiny drop in the ocean. <laughs> um, um, and uh, if we raise the bar a little bit and just say, what about those entries that are maybe visited but extremely rarely? So if by extremely rarely you uh, say 12 times over the three-year period, so once a quarter, then that becomes about 3,000 entries. In a little bit more detail, this is a, a plot of um, how many entries there are that are visited less than a certain frequency. So the first two lowest bars are what I've just said, 101 and 3,000. Uh, but if you look at the uh, dashed line, this is the median entry, and the median entry has been viewed on average 2.3 times uh, a week. So that's about 10 times a month or every three days. <laughs> um, that's the, the median one. Still another way of visualizing this in slightly more detail. And um, um, the, uh, so we, we have some of the data here. The, the choice of these labels is, is, not, is not principled, except the red ones, of course. But the, the white ones, these are just the round ranks, like 10, 50, 100, 500, and so on. But I guess you're a little bit uh, maybe <clears throat> 
curious about the no one's us from a hole in the ground being in between the lexicographer and conference? Is that what we're learning? I don't think so. I, that's, that would be a hasty conclusion. Uh, so, no. Uh, so, you have, a, you have like a few top entries that are looked up a lot. BF being the... So, that's an abbreviation, obviously. Right? Or uh, uh, BF can stand for a few things. Uh, best friend, boyfriend, black female, and a few others. And it confuses users, so they look it up a lot. And then, just to give you an idea of where these frequency ranges are, uh, probably none of us has ever seen or used uh, this word here. I don't even know how to pronounce this, but... Uh, so, the, however, beyond the anecdote, anecdotal, uh, what is important here is the shape of this curve, and the little segments seem to have slightly different, um, uh, slightly different inclines. So if you go from 10, the rank of 10, just, you know, um, beyond the exceptional top 10, from 10 to 10,000, so that's the size of like a basic dictionary of English, then it seems to be the case that for every, uh, for every three time decline in the views, um, or rather, sorry, for each tenfold change in the rank, there is a three times decline in the views. I think that's the direction that I should be going. Um, and then beyond the uh, 10,000, there's another segment, uh, let's say from 10,000 to about 300,000, the rank, so up to including 300,000 most commonly viewed entries, the, the decline is uh, sh steeper, uh, about 10 times less views per tenfold change in rank. And then, beyond that, there's an even sharper drop, but that may be just the very... Uh, the entries that shouldn't really be there, or maybe it's some sort of a ceiling effect because we're hitting the limits of the data. Okay, so moving on, still another way of looking at the same data. It's like a sigmoid curve of uh, sort of, uh, but what, what we get from this, again, we see the familiar median, 50% is, um, is 10 times a month, about. But also, looking at the top where it says 90%, that cuts off uh, the top 10%, right, uh, of most viewed entries. And uh, these, are, uh, these are seen uh, more than 100 times a month. So that's quite substantial. Uh, and then we wanted to look whether it mattered whether the entry was a single word entry or whether it, it was a multi-word entry. By multi-word, we mean that the, well, the head word or in, uh, in uh, Wiktionary terminology, that's the title of the dictionary article, right? So the head word. And it seems like they are similar with uh, single word entries being slightly more popular, but only a little bit. But then, if we try to the, split the blue box into two boxes, uh, let's say, call them multi-word entries and super multi-word entries, longer than six words in the, in the uh, head word, we get a, a rather unexpected effect here suggesting that the super multi-word entries are the most looked up. We were puzzled by this, and we think it's a little bit of an artifact, because if you limit the data to a reasonable 50,000 most viewed entries, so the, basically the size of, well, let's say, Cobalt, right? then this effect seems to evaporate. It's no longer there. So why is it there if you, we don't limit this? Well, this is because there's a long tail of very rare one-word entries, and that tail is uh, just um, driving down the statistics for single-word entries. So it's a, it's a sort of an artifact. And uh, okay, so we've spoken about the dark side, but there's also we 
I'd like to claim the blind spot of lexicography, uh, which consists in the following. When we look at these super multi-word entries, many of these are proverbs, and in fact there is a category, English proverbs, a special tag in, uh, in the dictionary. So looking at just the entries that have this tag, this is why it's quoted, because we don't claim that they're actual, actually English proverbs, we were struck by the fact that there's no way we could have guessed what the top entries here would be. Um, uh, uh, that the most looked up one would be uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Right? And the other one, the third one was immediately recognizable, right, <laughs> from a uh, very good movie. But, uh, but, I mean, in general, I mean, who's going to guess that? Uh, no one's going to guess that. So uh, this underlines the fact that we need a study like this or, or you know, concrete empirical data to know this. So uh, last slide. Um, another question that kind of cropped up because we didn't actually, this wasn't an original re research question, are entries like wine? No, we didn't come up with this, but when we looked at this sort of by exploring the data, we looked at this relationship between age of the entry and user interest as expressed in the number of views or the fr uh, frequency with which they visit. It seemed that maybe entries are like wine. So we sat down with a bottle of wine and we tried to figure out whether that's the case and we think no that's again an artifact they're not like wine rather it's not that as entries age they get so much better uh, uh, more palatable uh, sure there are revisions but again users have no way of knowing how good an entry is before seeing them and the data that we have here is before the user actually the users see the entry um, so what happens here is that this is a rather reassuring message that the, even the amateur lexicographers of the Wiktionary have pretty good intuitions about which, ent which entries need to be covered first. So they covered the important entries that people are going to need first, and this is why they manage to get old, <laughs> right? Um, so that's, I, we think, is the, is the mystery. More relevant words are added earlier. And just as uh, the last word, uh, coming back to the original question, uh, is much effort wasted, it's okay, because we no longer need it. Um, it no, the, this is a rather reassuring. It's, it's a drop in the ocean. The entries that haven't been looked at with reasonable frequency are a very small proportion of entries. I guess there's so many people out there that someone will always, you know, they'll find their favorite entries and they are different for different people. So <laughs> just do them all. Thank you so much. Okay then, not too dark after all, except for the bit about, you know, asses and holes in the ground. <laughs> uh, so any questions from the audience? Many, so let's start from the beginning. I'm sure this is on everyone's mind, but we know that views don't necessarily correlate with viewers. So how are you dealing with that problem? Sasha, would you like to address that? Sorry, views do not... Viewers. You mean like multiple ah, views from the same sure. person, like yeah. many people, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. A bot, yeah, that we discussed. Uh, yeah, so I maybe think the, the bot problem is the, is the main problem there. Um, and we have to rely on a newer algorithm by the Wikimedia Foundation, who after 2015 introduced an algorithm where they, um, where you could access different categories of views, and there are also automatic ones, but these are user, what they call user-generated views. Um, the only thing I can say about evaluating this algorithm is that I also did studies with the data sets before, 
and they were much, much larger. Um, so obviously something is get gets filtered out there. Um, but in a way we have to rely on their algorithm um, to really filter out bot views, of course, yeah. Um, these would all count as one, one view in this case, yeah. But that's okay, I think. I mean, if someone uses the, something a lot, well, that's good. <laughs> but we, these are not users, right? These are really views, also repeated views by one user, yeah. Okay, I'll quickly throw in one question from the online uh, broadcast. So there's a question from Anna Frankenberg, whether we can correlate the frequency of lookups with what's going on on social media, which is something we often observe in dictionary logs. Do you want to comment on that? Do you want to? I could. So yeah. not for the proverbs, we tried that. Mm -hmm. we, we tried to do some detective work on the top proverbs and we didn't find anything like popular song lyrics or movies or something like that, which were popular in a specific time frame. A spike, yeah. yeah. There was no spike. Yeah. And with social media, yeah, it's possible. We didn't do it with, uh, with this data set yet, but... Um, we also showed this with other data sets and it really depends on the on the word the spikes it really depends on the popularity of the event too um but yeah i i could point to some articles where we already looked at social short term social influences but in the end these are always spot checks it's really hard to to automate this in a way, this uh, we didn't manage yet, but it would be interesting. Okay, any more questions? Thanks for sharing these uh, findings. Uh, of course, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I wonder, I think these are wonderful news that uh, so few words are not looked at all or looked so little. So I wonder why you call it Rather, I would call it the light side of the dictionary or... In, well, but secondly, Robert, just a minute. It's not the dictionary, it's the wiktionary. Sort of uh, drawing conclusions from that and extrapolating to the dictionary, I think is a bit risky. I mean, the fact is that it's easy to use wiktionary for doing all of these investigations. How typical is wiktionary of dictionary lookup? In general, we don't really know. So perhaps call it the light side of Wiktionary. <laughs> Thank you. Perhaps. Okay, the first question. Uh, we, because of the conference deadlines, we had to come up with a title before we finalized the research. So that's the answer to that. And it didn't seem right to ask for a change in the title. Uh, the other question, sure. Yes, and it is convenient because this is just a very, very large data set that's out there and we can use it. Um, it is Wiktionary. It could be different for some other dictionaries, but I think that there's some research that shows that many of the dictionary, um, uh, of dictionary lookups by people are not lookups that are consciously directed at a specific dictionary, but they are redirected from search engines. And in that sense, if you look at the, this commonality should be exactly the same because it's actually, it's not about the dictionary, it's what they put in the search engine and then they click on the first dictionary that's there. So in that sense, I think that there should be some, gener some potential for generalization from these results. Um, yeah, that's more like it. They just had some question in a search engine and one of the results they received sort of very high up was from Liction, Wiktionary. So maybe, there, maybe, maybe. Choice. You say it's not a dictionary lookup. I mean, it depends how you define a dictionary lookup. <laughs> Uh, I would say that some people would say it is a dictionary lookup. Uh, 
Of course. Not some, yeah. for some it is, and for some it isn't. That's yeah. all I was trying to say. That it's not sure. so much of the dictionary, but it's a kind of individual case. No, obviously so it's, it's very... yes. Uh, I mean, you can conclude with some confidence about the data set, uh, uh, but there's only so much you can put in in the titles. But uh, it's understood. With yeah, so a lot depends on how you put the statistics, what counts and what doesn't. Yeah. So any more questions? We go from front to back. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very intrigued by the 101 entries that have never been viewed. So I don't know if you could tell us some of them. But also, I'm interested how those got into the dictionary, how they were drafted without ever being viewed, without the page ever being viewed by the person who wrote them into Wiktionary. Is there something weird about them? Yeah, we, we tried to look into that. And... Uh, the, we decided that in the end there there may be some patterns, but they're not clear enough and unambiguous to show. Apparently, there was what did we find? There were some hyphenated entries, as far as I remember, which was uh, and many chemical compounds that seemed to be very very rare. Someone put them in, probably a single user. By the way, the uh, the fact that these entries um, cropped up as um, never seen speaks to the fact that maybe the anti-bot filters work because why else would there be such entries which were never crawled if yeah uh, so sorry so yeah we can send you these entries that's not a problem I don't think we have a slide for them in the notes but they're not very remarkable. Obviously, they are. Uh, sometimes there are recognizable words just put together with a hyphen in a way that's not very typical. <laughs> but yeah, so so many hyphenated words, uh, words or maybe non-words, and uh, and some um, terms, rare terms, especially terms of chemistry. You mentioned the word convenableness, and that to me is a classic Wiktionary word, where it's a word which is obviously possible on the basis of English word formation rules, but in reality, nobody ever uses it. Um, and it's the, the weakness of Wiktionary that it's the people who compile it have no access to corpus data. This is and the one that. There's an yeah. awful lot of stuff like that uh, in Wiktionary, which are mm -hmm. sort of derived forms which. You know, I don't think I even recognize the yeah, root well, here. Copy, copyableness. It's just a, a, an English word for which there's probably almost zero evidence. Well, what do you um, mean? Do you want to turn this into an official question? <laughs> <laughs> so, turning this into the official question, what do you mean the users of dictionary do not have uh, access to corpus data? They have the internet. That's the biggest corpus of them all. The one that like 99% of people on earth know. So this isn't just something that sprung up of a user's imagination. It must have been used somewhere. And based on my uh, adventures in such seedy areas like Reddit or what's that one where with all the gay shipping in TV shows called, and other you know areas of the internet. I mean, these things will crop up somewhere. They might not be like major usage, but they are actually used. Especially if, if you're thinking about uh, the most of the user-created content, at least in some areas, is created by people who are like 13 to 17, and God knows what these people uh, they are up to. So, I would be very to discount. The terms like these, they might have actual usage and actual um, real life uh, importance for somebody, for some corner of the internet. Okay, I'm not sure it's a question for Michael or God or ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have one really, really quick one. Did you want yeah, a quick, quick one? Perhaps to Sasha. Um, you were showing that the correlation is between uh, lookup and frequency of the corpora. And I'm wondering, since we all know that the lookup is directed by the search engines, that is about 80% of the lookup is, is coming directly from search engines, at least as far as I know. And I'm wondering if you have already also inspected the frequency of, look, of Google lookups and uh, if this gives a different insight. I would love to do that. Um, 
Yes, for the online people. Um, yeah, of course, I would love to um, get my hands on some Google data sets with the, with the number of lookups. Um, but just to be clear that um, this is an effect that is also very, very robust in dictionaries that don't have anything to do with, um, the, or, nah, well, which online dictionary that has nothing to do with Google, of course, all of them have to do something with Google, but also dictionaries where you don't expect that they are so prominently in the search hierarchy in Google show this effect very, very strongly. Um, yeah even bilingual dictionaries, um, German dictionaries. I think we also did this, this kind of analysis Swahili. a few years back for the DVDS uh, lookups, which are also indexed by Google, of course, but yeah. It's not only Google, I can assure that, but I cannot correlate it directly because I don't have the Google data sets, of course. Uh. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, and uh, now to conclude an organization.